Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very much honored and happy to be here. Uh, we have many new friends and old friends, Felix, Nudi, Chilong, many, many old friends. And also we have some new friends today. I'm very happy. So I'm going to talk about the future and challenges of minimally invasive and non-invasive medicine. So this is a, a type of um, heritage of the past. This is the nature of the science, the rule of the science. It keeps on developing diagnosis. Medicine have, has passed uh, half centuries. So, from a cesarean open surgery, then endoscopic surgery, or the other big scan or MRI. So, in fact, it is a trend towards minimally and non invasive medicine. It is a way of development. So uh, we used to rely very much on the hands of the surgeon. And now we rely very much on the eyes of the surgeon, at the image. So the science also brought the development of medicine development. And now we can get the information of the patient extra corporeally. So the teachers always said to the students that the traditional surgeries are always necessary. With the help of the laparoscopy, surgeon is also needed. But it develops and the extracorporeal treatment is the future direction of the development. So there is a, always no best technology, but, but the best matchable technology and usually requires multi-model and diversified personalized solutions to the patients. So minimal and non-invasive development is the future direction of development. So let's see this slide, the traditional lancet. Uh, what about Haifu knife? They are resembled with the tool nose, resemble the two, the focus of Haifu knife. And exists the, the wave, the caustic wave, and the physical knife as we see. So we have been used to the traditional physical knife or lancet. On the road of development of science and medicine, and this knife can be digitalized. So we can use the coordinates to position the full knife and to define it by energy. So the information technology, big data, and these technology help the technology develop in 
operation. So we can see also the development of image anatomy. And the next step is for the digital image or digital anatomy. So when we guide the tool nodes of the Haifu knife, we use the real-time essence of the ultrasound image. And now we can have the automatic image of the ultrasound or MRI image so that the new model will be remodeled. The size, contour, and number can be clearly seen from the image. But behind this actually lies in the digital technology. So this is the pre-operation image. And after the treatment, we can just see the dark hole because there is no vessel. So all these can be digitalized. As Professor Yu Xin said that the surgeons are are used to take these images and so that we can feel that uh, uh, tangibly. But the science and technology are developing all the time. So we are thinking about whether we can have this pathological diagnosis from the outer part of the body. So we can see that uh, the professor are doing the research through this deep learning by machine. It can reach the accuracy of distinguishing between uterine leomyel sarcoma and a typical leomyoma using machine learning reached 87 percent. So endoscopy is dangerous, but if we think it twice, we use the digital pathology with the 87 accuracy. And through the machine learning, deep learning, and in the future, and we can increase the safety of our operation and surgery. So minimal and non-invasive pathological diagnosis is of great significance to the medical development. And this is a paper issued by Bin Xiu. And he said that the next generation diagnostic pathology is about to happen. With very good accuracy. With all those lesions visualized and non invasive pathological diagnosis existing. So the digitalized anatomy and digitalized uh, pathology. So the future of minimal and non-invasive medicine is just uh, there about to see. And through digitalization, intelligentization and information, we can share this information remotely. And with the support of a 5G technology, a focused ultrasound ablation surgery has unlimited possibilities. So the scenarios of the operations will be varied. For example, 
the doctor in Shanghai International Medical Center. He said that we can build a parallel operation room just outside the hospital. So he just did that. Decades of miles away from the hospital, he built this uh, parallel operation room. And from there, he can monitor the surgeon, the operation in hospital. But it needs our efforts to achieve these possibilities. So this technology can help us to break through the limitation of the geography. So several thousand miles away, the doctor can give the operation to the patients remotely here in Chongqing to the patients in, in Mongolia and some other provinces. And the whole process and the evaluation of these operations can be finished in Chongqing. So in the future, probably Professor Chi Long will also have this opportunity with the support of the 5G technology can have this remote operation in Taiwan only with the support of this technology. And at the same time, we can ensure the quality of the operation, and we can also give the homogeneous training to these doctors and surgeons and sharing the knowledge without boundaries internationally. So minimal and non-invasive medicine will also bring the development of uh, science and technology in an operation. The traditional open surgery is important because it's the foundation and also the endoscope enjoys the same significance an important role, uh, but we're going to consider to integrate them together. As I mentioned to Professor David Cresson, we're going to build this architecture, this global architecture. So what's inside? As you can see this picture, at the very big screen in this architecture, and the screens with the operations all over the world. So by using the technology of metaverse, AI, so we can see the operations conducted in different places. And you can just see the process of the operation in this center by viewing the screens. And the dome of this uh, architecture is the shining stars. And these stars and or points actually are the location of these hospitals over the world. So the shining of the stars means that the operation is on. So you can see that you can in you can see these operations at the same time across the boundaries of uh, space and time. And um, in, according to the 2022 year book of uh, Focus Ultrasound Foundation, there were um, one 159 independent indications for clinical applications. Now we have more. So no matter what types of uh, Therapies, we combine all the technology to solve these indications so to benefit the patients. That's our goal, the goals of the doctors to preserve the organs, to preserve the life. 
So we should be thankful. The combination of human wisdom and efforts. So last century, my brother proposed that can ultrasound be focused from outside the body into the body to precisely kill tumor tissues without harming the surrounding tissues and the normal function of the body. And now we are here today um, working in this industry. So when I say uh, you are very experienced in traditional surgery and endoscopic surgeries, and now we are in the beginning of the new technology by using the focused ultrasound, and the ultrasound wave function when it penetrates the tissue. It will produce the reflection, infraction, and different effects. It involves a lot of uh, complicated reactions and procedures. So we have worked on this um, course for several years. And we're still talking about this biological system. And biology is the foundation. And we do biology, so we should have fully uh, understanding the concept of the knife point. And also, we use this uh, black box principle to have this systematic thinking. And in the year 1919, uh, the first HIFO equipment was produced. And to the 20, the first uh, focused ultrasound tumor treatment system was added to the collection of the National Museum. And focused ultrasound working principles is very complicated for us to understand and grasp. And we have different ways of focal working principles to spherical focal point. And with the national support, we can produce very high acoustic pressure so that it can destroy anything in it. So how this can be used or applied in medical development, I think uh, this is the things that I'm going to share with you next time we meet in the summit. So once with the application, uh, there will be the breakthrough to help the minimal and non-invasive treatment into a new development phase. We have a lot of challenges, uh, like the policy, national policy. So the Chinese government is studying international standards for disease classification and payment by diagnosis related grouping for innovative technologies. And second is about the mastery of focused ultrasound, ablation techniques, and a physician training. So um, I hope that we can uh, cooperate with each other to do the training work, even from undergraduate to master to, po to doctors. So it is a concept in talent training. And the third challenge is the interdisciplinary integration requires the integration of life science and engineering science and the full integration of medical engineering science and even with the social sciences. So we must see the patients. Okay. That's the function of uh, our society. Uh, this is the fifth summit of this movement. And this concept 
She was supported by the doctors and our International Society of Minimal Invasive and Virtual Surgery and a foundation she co-worked together to achieve our goals to preserve millions utilized of women. And this is our goal. And we are also going to preserve millions breasts of women. I think that's our common goal. So, with the preservation of the universe and race is to preserve the rights of the women to be a mother, means to preserve the future human beings. With the decrease of the birth rate and aging population, so this needs our doctors, and this is our mission. And the high food babies, as a neurosurgeon said, that the health focus of your son also uh, treat many brain tumors or diseases. Hopefully, our neuroscientists will answer these questions in the future. We hope that in the future, and the patients with the brain diseases will be minimally harmed in the treatment. That's our goal of minimal non-invasive medicine. As William Osler said, disease at harm requires treatments that harm less. Thank you.